You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. We're doing the uh, recap of the week, are we, Tommy? Where yeah. Snitchy, our trusty audio man, gets without a doubt the best bits of the show from throughout the week oh. and nicely packages it up. It's quite offensive. Have a listen. Hey, Whips, I'm a little under the weather this week, so if you wouldn't mind helping me introduce the recap. Welcome to the show. Go. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Um, Fitz, would you mind helping out? Somebody shoot me. Okay, mate, no need to be dramatic. <laughs> Classic stuff. We had a lot of fairly serious updates this week about the death of Queen Elizabeth, but thankfully we had foreign correspondent David Woywood join us to give us all the info. Hi, good morning, guys. We're not sure if he'll ever join us again, though, because Whipper constantly gets his name wrong. We are crossing to David Worrywood. No, it's Woywood, Whip. In Edinburgh is David Worrywood. Repeat after me. David. David. Woywood. Woywood. Wood. Somebody shoot me. It's been hard going keeping the guys interested in the royals this week. When we do celebrate the life of Queen Elizabeth II, we do have to give away some Bruno Mars tickets. <laughs> but get them talking about royal dogs. The bloodline that remained through the corgis, that ran all the way to like two years ago. And you can't bloody stop them. Imagine if there was like a princess die corgi, somehow got out of Buckingham mm. Palace and then went and hooked up with a razor dog from Thailand. <laughs> Went to a full moon party. <laughs> Came back with a different breed in it. And it's probably best not to ask how Matt DeGroot knows this. That, that has happened. One of her corgis, Tiny, was left with Princess Margaret's sister, Dashhound. They mated and they created a brand new wow. breed of dog. Wow. God, if he was only that good at his actual job. The M7 is still heavy eastbound from the Quakers Hill Parkway onto the M2. At Homebush West. Mate, we don't need the dramatic pause. We just need the traffic. Love you, Matt. Oh, OK. Just want to let you know that. Well, I lust for you. That's what? exciting to think about. <laughs> uh, guys, Billie Eilish. <laughs> Billie Eilish. Hey, what's up? This is Billie Eilish. Billie. Yeah, Billie Eilish did join us this week. G'day, mate. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to have you on, Tiger. <laughs> and she blessed the guys with an absolutely on-point bird impression. I was standing on the balcony in the hotel room going, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, it sounds exactly oh, like that. Yeah. And she wasn't wrong. Here's Billy. Wah. Here's a crow. Ah. Not bad. Duh. But of course, Whipper had to crack out his one animal impression as well. Can I give you my dolphin? Oh, it's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Here's Whipper. Here's a dolphin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You be the judge. Don't try to get yourself onto a Billy Eilish oh, song. I can't believe you're going to write a song <laughs> about myself. <laughs> that is so kind of you. Just quickly, back to the Queen, since it's been such a big topic this week. There's been some amazing stories. It was quite impressive that it only took four days for Fitzy to find a connection between her... We've been waiting for his thoughts on the Queen's passing. ...and Snoop Dogg. Where's your nephew, Snoopy Deagle Double Jizzle? He couldn't get into the UK for quite a while. Oh, then. that's right. They kicked me out the UK. But guess what? came to my defense. The queen. The queen shut it down. When the queen speak, bow down. You did. Oh, isn't that a, such a touching story? The fact that he reenacted what he thinks the queen yeah. may have said. Bow down. When the queen speak. When the queen speak. Bow down. Bow down. <laughs> bow down. Bow down. Well done, Snoop. That was touching. I was emotional. Take notes, Channel 7. Bow down. That's how you do royal coverage. You did. Tell us what you're thinking. You certainly did. <laughs> Whipper's nine-year anniversary with Lisa this week. It was beautiful just to have a moment to celebrate nine years of marriage. And, of course, he took the opportunity to give us all a little bit of love advice. It was a love brush, says. Not a tushy tap, but a love brush. Suggestively. Like a toilet duck. No, it's not. Oh. So I'd like to present Whipper's top three tips for a successful marriage. I'm fat, I'm fat, you know what, I'm fat. Don't isolate that. I'm... Uh, <laughs> yeah, what else? Do not isolate that. Number one, always be showing affection. Kiss with your partner. At least on the lips in a three-second embrace every day. And then he goes and cries in his room. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Why don't we show the kids the video of our wedding day? Relive some of your special memories. The amount of duck poo. Every duck in the area had had a colonic irrigation and it had dumped it on that lawn. Oh, Lisa wait. had this trail on her dress, which was like oh, a fishing net in the water, and it caught as much poo as possible. Yeah. She dragged poo yeah. around for the rest of the day. Now, well, I organised that. I threw all the bread <laughs> on the ground. And three. I then had Francesca come up to me. Make sure the whole family is involved in your special day. She's two and a half. You got a big tummy. You sure? Yeah. So I'm kind oh, of going She on. thinks she's going to get another sister. No, she doesn't. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's not. So there you go. Uh, good luck, I guess. You're a gentleman. You wait for the girls to grab one dumpling first, but then once they do, bang, it is on. <laughs> <laughs>
Hot 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 on the show Monday. Hello, hello, sexy people. And I've left him to the very end because every time we get him on, he's just got the wildest stories. Like meeting Chris Rock at a party. My mind kind of just drifts off and then this body appears walking up the stairs and I'm like, man famous man. Oh, <laughs> man famous man Chris Rock. Oh, oh, you're staring at Chris oh, Rock sorry. now. Say hello. And by the time I got to that bit, Chris went, what my... Like that. <laughs> and like reared up at me like I'm staring him out and I wanted to fight. It was a good story, but I don't think it'll ever top the story he told us last time he came on the show. She looks at me and she goes, have you got morning glory? Oh. And I went, yeah. And that's all I can legally play to you. Wow. But if you'd like to hear the full story, just Google Robbie Williams cleaner. She's polishing more than the vases <laughs> around the room. Thank me later. See you guys next week. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast.